Regard the omnipresent sun as an ink pot and your conscience a pen. Take the sun's bright ink and write with the pen of conscience on the canvas of your mind. I tell you, uncle, in confidence, that there'll be no mistake. In your thirteenth generation, will I return, newly formed. That you're my uncle and I your nephew, so will we remain then. Those services left for completion by the avatars, will I accomplish at an auspicious hour when I'll return with the ultimate aim of bringing back the age of truth. Germinated as a seed, sprouted as a tree, I'll fructify and will return as a seed back to the earth again. Yada yada hi bhavati Whenever there's a decline of righteousness and rise of unrighteousness, then I send forth myself for the protection of the good, for the destruction of the wicked, and for the establishment of righteousness, I come into being from age to age. From the depth of space, as a bolt of light descending unto this earth, did he take the form of man and take the name of Balok Goshai? Address the village of Medini Mondol. Residence the house of twelve brothers. My father and uncles were great scholars. They used to teach at a Sanskrit school and would till the land and plough the field. It was the night of Kali Puja on 9th November. 1920. Without a name-giving ceremony, he was named Birendra. Gradually, everyone came to know of him within the family and without, in the neighborhood 
and outside, in the village and beyond. Even strangers to the family became dear to him and their number increased every day. Birds and beasts, plants and trees he made his own and they him. By receiving and giving love did grow up the God of love. The Panchayat Patrika reported, Lately in Dhaka, a great man of tender age has arrived. His Holiness, Sri Birendra Chandra Chakraborty. Since his birth, he is endowed with the eight great magical powers and control over the body, ability to fly and hear from a distance, foresight, recalling the deceased, and so on. His wisdom, grace, and kindness reigns unbounded. He has made an ambrosial stream flow along many a dry river. The angst of many men and women has turned into roses by his touch. Even staunch atheists, by experiencing his yogic magnificence, are ready to become his disciples. I'm mingling in the most common way with the most common people. I do not pretend to be a guru or an avatar or god. My goal is to rouse everyone from slumber. I'm not a Hindu, nor a Muslim or a Christian. I'm a descendant of this earth. My religion is the religion of man. Nineteen forty seven. He resolved to leave East Bengal, came to Calcutta, took up residence in Shambhajar at forty six Bhupen Bosch Avenue. It was here that he underwent the twenty two day long Nirvikalpa Samadhi. The aim was to seek the real essence, the truth behind it. What happens to one absorbed in Samadhi? During Samadhi, the sadhaka transcends the conscious state to reach the subconscious. Outwardly inert, he remains nonetheless awake inwardly. He arrives at an apparent condition of death. Even while awake, he is not aware of anything. And yet, a realization continues to be effective. Being in unison with the soul of nature, the inner soul reaches the higher level of existence. The endless mind then continues to flow like a free flowing fountain. Innumerable devotees begin to pour in. His mother also visits him from time to time. When it comes to talking about her son, she looks dumbfounded. Before the world is revealed, his fully manifested appearance. At Shukchor, his ashram was built on the bank of the Ganga. In the words of His Holiness, Sitaram Dash Unkarnath, you should know, in no monastery, temple, place of pilgrimage or idol will you find Narayana. If you wish to witness the true image of Narayana, go and visit Shukchor. Shukchar has turned into a place of pilgrimage with the assembly of a multitude of devotees. Our aim is not to trade in the name of religion, but to acquaint our society with the true meanings of religion and which basic truths the society stands distanced from. They confuse society by interpreting religion perversely. 
Religion says that everybody should enjoy equal rights, as in socialism, the Vedas preach socialism as well. Socialists assert that the nation needs to be freed from the exploiters. Our Vedas always upheld the doctrine that the country needs to be freed from the demons. I've come to destroy all evil. I've come in the form of Rudra. Be not afraid. I've come again. I've come for establishing the realm of justice by destroying the demons, the extortioners, the imposters and the devilish order and to build up a society based on Vedic principles. I have come to extend throughout the world one religion, one nation, one set of principles and one similar order. For that cause, lakhs of my children are ready. Ready for another Kurukshetra, for the sake of self-emulation. Ready through self-destruction, for recreation and revival. I want to inform people the science of religion. Religion is nobody's personal property. It is as crystal clear as the sun, based wholly on reality. Religion preaches that society must be freed from poverty. The true aim of religion is to uplift society till nary a beggar remains. But what you witness on all sides is a beggar's procession. You find here only parties and sects and extortion. Everywhere prevails this game, this conflict. Such conventional religion and politics cannot go together. Here, religion is personal, fanciful with disputes and discords. First try to understand the import of religion. It's scientific, rational, mathematical, melodic, rhythmical and carries a tempo. That's what religion is all about. Where religion is only a myth and fancy, emotion and effusion, there exists no religion. First know, then realize, and then follow. And that requires initiation. Initiation is like admission to a school, where the head teacher can teach according to his liking and can give the opportunity to receive education. Religion is one to all, the religion of man. With intellect and wisdom, with objective and real sense perception, by considering impartially, try to understand everything and proceed. Some ideas will be discarded and some will stay on. This process will help you learn the truth and no confusion will persist. And then you'll be wrapped in attention to Him, in dedication to Him. You'll go beyond all questions. Every problem will be solved at that state by one of intellect.
The sun is the father and the earth the mother of all human beings. They comprise the Shantandal. In order to subdue all demonic forces, all Shantans will have to come up. The sole duty of the Shantans is to propagate the true philosophy of the Vedas, to awaken the masses. Peace can follow only this way about, and this is the path leading to peace. For any kind of accomplishment, there is need for some organization. The body of any country consists of numerous organizations. We find unity in the interactions of all these organizations. Their sole task is how to construct. The Shantandal, at the root of every organization, is acting like blood worked into veins. Without depending upon anybody's expectation, nature is moving spontaneously along its own way. The Shantans are fellow travelers. Their movement is natural, simple and pleasant. In such a movement, their virtues will inherently function. The followers of nature's systemic movements will follow the same path. This is an inevitable rule. The Shantans are bound by that discipline. This cannot be accomplished without taking one seat on the saddle of silence. The Shantans absorbed in such meditation are setting music to their mind's veena. By maintaining melodic rhythm to that music, the Shantans try to keep pace within its limit. The path that the Shantans are following is founded on the silence of the cosmos. The cooperation of all is necessary for accomplishment of the Shantans' endeavors. To me, work is religion. My task is to prepare the ground for that. The solar world, the physical world, the animate world, all are revolving in an untiring effort to be caught up with. The sun, the moon, the planets and the stars, all are tirelessly and collectively upholding the process of creation in the center of the universe. I find nothing existing outside the sphere of work. That which is upholding creation is true religion. Work, in all its forms, is holding like a pillar the whole universe together. 